1 Corinthians 10, 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, that's one group of people, nor to the Gentiles, that's another group of people, nor to the church of God, that's a third group of people. Jews, those are the flesh and blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Gentiles, those are the flesh and blood descendants of everyone else. The church are those who've had a second birth, a spiritual birth. They're no longer Jew, no longer Gentile. They are born again children of the living God. Three groups. Second, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse number 5, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. The church has had a problem since its beginning. Men want to teach the law to the church without understanding the law they're teaching or the law's relationship to the church, or the church's relationship to the law. The title of tonight's message is, No One Tithes. No One Tithes. When I show you from the Bible what tithing is, you will agree with me that no one tithes. There are pastors in the United States who will announce from their pulpits when I'm preaching in the area, do not go hear that man preach, he doesn't believe in tithing. But I do believe in tithing. For Jews under the law in the land. There are preachers who tell their congregations when we start a radio program in a new area, do not listen to that man on the radio, do not listen to his radio program, he doesn't teach tithing. I do teach tithing. They don't teach tithing. They teach 10% of a, of, a, of a saved person or a lost person's money to the church. That's not tithing. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll study the Bible. Um, there are preachers who cornered me at lunch table at fellowship meetings and said, I, 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 you're tearing up, the, you're, you're harming the work of the gospel because you, you preach against tithing. They never ask, what do you teach? Listen, if you're a saved, born-again believer living by the New Testament, if all you do is tithe, shame on you. I, tithing would be a step down for a New Testament Christian. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the Bible and see what the Bible says. If I got up in a church the first night of a meeting and said, in order for you to please God, you've got to bring an animal sacrifice. People said, no way, that's the law. If I get up the next night and said, you've got to throw out all your garments that are mixed fabric, that's the law. But if I got up the third night and preached, you've got to tithe or God will get it out of you one way or the other, most preachers would say, could you preach that again tomorrow night? It's, it's, like, it's like reverse heresy. It's heresy to teach the law in a Christian church, but all of a sudden it's okay to, it's a heresy to not teach tithing in a Christian church. And tithing is a matter of the Old Testament law. We'll see that before we finish. Now there are, according to 1 Corinthians 12, there are diversities of gifts. Same spirit. There are differences of ministration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but the same God which worketh all in all. There is no biblical instruction as to how to collect money in a New Testament church. There is clear New Testament instruction on how to give money in the New Testament church. What I mean by that is, we don't pass an offering plate. That's not right or wrong. We have a box in the back. That's not right or wrong. We don't have envelopes in the, in the pew. That's not right or wrong. There are different ways to take offerings. What is wrong is when you threaten people with verses taken out of their context and when you teach people false doctrine because you think it will advantage you monetarily, that's wrong. That's a problem. And if, you're, if you just got saved or if you just got in a Bible-believing church, if you don't tithe, you should start tithing. If you don't 5%, you should start 5%ing. 
If you don't one percent, you should start one per. You should start somewhere. But we want to get you as quickly as we can to the Bible position, so you can do things right. Now, um, I, I just say a couple of things before we jump in here all, all the way. If, if preaching about money bothers you, it's because you're covetous and you love money. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Uh, the only people I've ever known that get bothered by preaching on money are the people that don't give. Why do you care if anybody preaches on, on money? You don't, it has nothing to do with you. You don't give anything. <laughs> well, like I'm preaching on money. Well, it doesn't affect you. When I go to church, I do pass an offer plate. You, just let me give you a little hint in case you, you, you leave here and go somewhere else or you're visiting a church and they pass an offering plate. If you fold up the dollar bill so nobody knows it's a one, everybody knows it's a one. If it was a 20 or a 50 or a 100, you wouldn't have folded it up. It just makes more work on the people that have to count them. <laughs> my, my, you know, my dad was a, was a banker and he, he said... Uh, one night down to the, at the bank, he walked by the vault and he heard voices and he went inside and the, and the money was talking in the bank vault. And the, the 50 said to the 20, where you been? I said, oh man, I've been restaurants, ski resorts, vacations. And 20 said to the 50, how about you? He said, well, you know, mainly to the mall and the, and the shopping center, but I, I've been around the world. And they looked over and in the corner was a $1 bill with a sad look on his face. And they said, where you been? He said, church, 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 nowhere but church. <laughs> That's, that's about how those things go. Anyway, let's go to Malachi. Malachi, the famous chapter on tithing and God breaking children's arms and uh, putting wives in the hospital and stuff is in Malachi. Malachi, chapter 3. I've never helped count our offering. I've never looked to see who gives. I've never checked anybody's income report. The only people I ever asked, somebody wants wants money from the church to go uh, do something or be a missionary or something. We just always make sure that somebody wants missionary money that they've been given to missionaries. And, but other than that, I don't know who gives what. Uh, we've never come after you for your money. If, you, if you're rich, I don't know it. You're poor, uh, I, I won't know it unless you say something about it. Uh, but we're going to treat you the same. We don't, we don't, we don't you know, give special treatment to people because they got money and, and rotten treatment to people that don't money, uh, have money. You act rotten, we'll, we'll deal with you accordingly whether you're rich or poor. And if you act right, we'll deal with you accordingly whether you're rich or poor. We're not, we're not here for your money, and, and you should know that by now. But at the same time, same time you know, the, this, the same crowd that's bankrupt in America, they want, they want use of musical instruments and, and use of, re, of uh, refrigerators and, and use of uh, you know, facilities for, for the kids' birthday parties and use of a van when they want to go somewhere, but they want to complain if you suggest they ought to contribute something. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That welfare mindset, it doesn't work in America, it doesn't work in a church house. Yeah. It's, 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 anyway, Malachi 1, verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord the burden of the word of the Lord to, to Israel by Malachi. Now, let's see, Jew, Gentile, church of God. Which one would Israel be? That would be the Jew, right? It wouldn't be the Gentile, it wouldn't be the church of God. So, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. So, before I, I get... All in on Malachi 3.10, I want to make sure that I'm Israel. And if I'm not Israel, I want to study Malachi 3.10 and learn from Malachi 3.10, but not get too worried about Malachi 3.10. So let's read it. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 8. Will a man rob God? Well, of course, he does it every day. Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. God didn't expect them to tithe. They expect them to tithe, tithe and give offerings on top of the tithe. I'll show you that. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. 
If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Well, that's that's really interesting passage of Scripture. I like it. I enjoy it. It's a blessing. Verse number 9, who's robbed him? This whole nation. Is there a Baptist nation? Is there an independent Baptist nation? Is there a Bible believer nation? Is there a... He's talking to a nation. What nation is he talking to? Chapter 1, verse 1, nation of Israel. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. He's talking to a people who are required to tithe, and if they don't tithe, he'll starve them out until they do. There's nothing there about taking their jobs or wrecking their cars or giving their children the flu so they lose their tithe in a doctor bill. This is a nation of people who have to give give a tithe, and if they don't give a tithe, their land won't be blessed, and if they do give a tithe, their land will be blessed. Now, when I show you what a tithe is, you'll see why that's necessary and why it's important. Now, if you run the New Testament from start to finish, uh, the Old Testament start to finish, do you know what the storehouse is? It's a storehouse. And if you run meat through the Old Testament start to finish, you know what it is? It's meat. God said, I want you to bring food and put it in a storehouse so somebody will have food to eat from the storehouse. That's what he's talking about. Now, we got a church to run here. We don't need you to bring groceries. We can't pay a light bill with groceries. We can't put groceries in a box and ship them to missionaries. We need money. We don't need to store food. Tithing's about food. It's not about, I don't know about that. That's why why we're here. That's why we study the Bible together. So things you don't know about when you come, you can know about when you leave. Now Proverbs 26.2 says, The curse causeless shall not come. Jesus Christ died upon a cross to pay for all my sins. I trusted him as my Savior, and God cleansed me from all my sin and gave me everlasting life. He said to me, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's me. Are you saved? That's you. There's no preacher can curse me when God has given me everlasting life. What, what is that? It's, it's a frustrated man who can't get people to love God enough to support the church they go to. Or it's a sincere, dedicated, godly man who was taught a certain doctrine and teaching and approach to giving, and he has sincerely continued to teach that. I, see, this is the difference between me, me and, and, and my brethren. If, if I find out somebody doesn't believe in a gap or a no gap, or somebody believes in tithing or not tithing, or I never break fellowship with them. Because those aren't fellowship issues. You believe in salvation by grace through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. You believe the Bible is the Word of God. You believe the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know, but my brethren, if they find one thing they disagree with you about, you're done. You just, well, that's it. You're, you're off the list. Well, you know what? Your, your list is going to end up being you. You think it's you and your wife, but she's sick of it too. <laughs> She just, she does not say anything. And so anyway, God's not going to curse me if I rob him. Because, I mean, you've got to go by the Bible words. Cursed. 
There might be some correction in my life. There might be some chastening in my life. There might be some, some discipline in my life. There might be some rebuke in my life. My Father in heaven is not going to curse me. That's powerful words. All right. I don't have to give God $20 to prove whether or not he's going to give me a blessing either. Bring your tithe in the storehouse and see if I'll bless you. He has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What's my $40 a week going to do? Uh, Look at here, God. 50 bucks. Get a blessing ready. I'm I'm going to drop it. I'm giving to God because I am blessed. I'm not giving to God in hopes that, looky here, I'm going to pull the lever on the offering plate and see if I can get uh, three cherries to come up and all the quarters pop out the bottom. That Oral Roberts uh, tithe and hit the jackpot business, it's weird, man. Cast your bread upon the waters, and after many days you'll find it. Cast your bread upon the waters, and the fish will eat it. People, people just grabbing stuff out of the Bible, and just, just doing all kinds of things with it. Anyway, storehouse, that's a storehouse. Meat, that's meat. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what we have in the law, and then we'll go to the law and see it. I think it would think be easier if I tell you and then we go see it rather than if we try to see it and try to pick it apart. In the Word of God, there really is a storehouse, and it really is for putting meat in. And the people did not take of their livestock and their crops and bring the prescribed offering and put it, if, if they didn't bring the, the, their livestock and their crops and bring the prescribed offering and put it into that storehouse, God would see to it that the next time around they didn't have any livestock and they didn't have any crops. If you're not going to give it to me, I'm not going to give it to you. That's what he said. Now, think about this. God has 12 tribes that make up the nation of Israel. Correct? He took one tribe, Levi, and separated them. He then divided Joseph into two, made, made the 12 tribes. But the 13th, Levi becomes the 13th tribe, the odd man out. He moved Levi into separate class, put Ephraim and Massey, Joseph's son, in their place. So there's still 12 tribes. The 12 tribes were to feed the Levitical tribe so the Levites could spend all their time ministering to and serving the Lord's people. This tithe was to provide for the Levites. Now, why didn't they bring money? Have you read what the Levites did? Cut wood, built fires, slaughtered animals, offered sacrifices, cleaned up wood, hauled off ashes, took away the refuse of of the animals... They don't have time to go to the market and haggle over vegetables. You bring them food so they can eat and serve me. Now, you know what that means? Here again, that's why I say nobody tithes. No church tithes. If the New Testament church ran on a tithing principle, one out of every 13 men could be in the full-time ministry. I don't know any church where everybody tithes so that one man out of every 13 can be full-time ministering for the Lord. That's what, that's what they did. One tribe in 13 is full-time ministry. They're not, that, well, they're, they're not working. They're working like nobody ever worked. But they're not having to go out and earn money to shop with because of the tithe. So, what's clear from the Malachi passage? The Jew has to tithe as a matter of law. The tithes be brought into one building, the storehouse. There's not a storehouse in every town because there's not an altar in every town where the Levites are ministering. They're not driving all over the country to go get, get the tithe from this town and that town and that town. You bring it. So, there is a central location where the, fun, where the, the tithe is, is donated. 
The tithe was food to feed the Levites. If the people did not tithe, God would curse them. If the people did tithe, their blessings would be so abundant they would have no room for them. All right, Leviticus 27. None of those things are true of the New Testament church, by the way. Leviticus 27. Leviticus 27. See, so when I preach this, these preachers say, well, you know, I got people in my church, if, if, you, if you preach this, they wouldn't tithe. Those people wouldn't tithe anyway. <laughs> the people that are looking to latch on to something like this to justify not tithing, they're not going to stop tithing. They're just going to feel, feel less guilty about the fact that they don't tithe. This isn't going to stop anybody from giving. Leviticus 20, uh, 27, I'm sorry, 27. Verse 30, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. You see what the tithe is? It's agriculture. It's what you eat. Now, now watch, watch. This is, why, this is why I say nobody tithes. You don't know anybody that tithes. And if a man, 31, and if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. You know what God said? If you want to sell your stuff and give money instead of bringing your stuff, you got to add 20% on top. So you know what a tithe is if you're giving money? It's 30%. I don't know anybody preaches tithing. <laughs> now, I sure don't know anybody that, that would uh, be happy about it if tithing was preached. Do you, you read what you just said? You know what the fifth part is? That's 20%. Right. So if you're not going to bring the 10% of your agriculture, you can redeem it, go sell it, get money for it, but what you, the money you get, add 20% to it because that priest doesn't have time to go out and, and, and haggle at the market. The Bible's an interesting book when you get around to reading it, isn't it? All right, uh, verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd, or of the flock, even whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he uh, change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. Now you know what you just read there? Malachi 1.8 says, if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? Here's what God said. Your animals are coming out of the field. Good one, good one, good one, crippled, pull that out, give that to God. Good one, good one, scurvy, pull that out, give that to God. You know what God said? If you, if you think you're going to give me the junk that you don't want to breed, if you think you're going to give me the sorry animals that you don't want reproducing, you give me that one and go get me a good one and give me a good one. That's what he said. Is God good enough for your best animal? Where'd you get your best animal? From God. Is God good enough for the one that's not crippled or blind or halt or, or diseased? Sure he is. Then stop giving him your garbage and give him your best. That's the law of the tithe. Now, honestly, honestly, just from the Bible, just from the Bible, do you know a church that practices tithing? You know how many people would have nothing to give? A few of you have goats, a couple of you have cattle, some of you have chickens. We don't want any of that. <laughs> Sunday morning, here comes the bus and the kids get off. Here comes the second bus and the kids get off. Here comes the third bus and all the animals get off. Where are we going to put them? There's no storehouse here. Hey, you want to bring in a dozen eggs? Praise the Lord. That's not a tithe. The tithe in the Bible is if you, if you grow crops, 10%. If you, if you raise livestock, 10%, and not the junk, the good stuff. Now, here's what's interesting. Verse 34, these are the commandments the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. 
You know what God does? Exodus 20, there's the Ten Commandments, then here's the sacrifices, then here's the offerings, right? Then here's the tabernacle, then here's the furniture, then here's the feast days, then here's the, here's the holy days. You know what we do when we're preaching a sermon? We try to, to save that last important point to the end, so that's what you take home with you. You know what God said in Leviticus? Last thing, you better bring me that tithe. See, what good is instructions for a tabernacle if you can't pay for it? What good is instructions for sacrifice and offering if you can't pay for it? So all the instruction as to how to carry out the law and the feast days and the holy days and, and all of that, if the people don't love God enough to give, it can't happen. So well, you haven't said anything about money yet. I know we, we're going to get there. We're going to get the money part. Numbers 18, let's go there. Numbers chapter 18. Numbers 18. Verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land. Neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. See, that Levites have no land. All they got left is the service of God in the tabernacle. If they got no land, they can't grow crops. If they got no land, they can't raise livestock. They're going to starve to death if somebody doesn't feed them. Come on, everybody, everybody see that? Now watch. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, you want my next point to prove nobody tithes? Do you know who got the tithe? The priests. It didn't go for oil. It didn't go for sacrifices. It, did, it didn't go to pay the rent. It didn't go to put gas in a bus. The entire tithe went to the Levites. Now, how'd you like to get a financial report at the end of the year? Bible Baptist Church, tithes and offerings, $200,000. Pastor's salary, $200,000. Only one person here would like that. My wife. <laughs> you, you, you see what you just read? The tithe goes to the Levites. It doesn't go to the upkeep of the tabernacle. It doesn't go to the funding of the, of the Passover or the, or the new moon celebration. It, it goes to that priest. I don't want anybody preaching that. Benny Hinn finds that he might try preaching it. But. Now look, look at verse 22. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout, all, throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. Inheritance. Now, you know who gets to serve the Lord in the New Testament church? Everybody. Everybody. You know what God said? If you're from Ephraim, if you're from Manasseh, if you're from Issachar, if you're from Zebulun, and you try to come in here and offer a sacrifice, I will drop you. You got no business in here. You know what the Lord said of us in the New Testament? We are all priests. Praise God. Amen. So it's a whole different system. It's a whole different situation. That tithe went to one group of people so they could devote themselves entirely to the service of God at that altar. And they, God took away all their land. They don't have any land. So what do they live on? They've got to live on what other people grow on their land. Now, if a man, if a man from the tribe of, of Manasseh is, is over there cutting up bullocks and trying to offer them on the altar. You know what God said? What are you doing, man? Go grow some food. 
Well, I just want to serve God. Well, I didn't pick you to serve me. Go grow some food. I picked Levi to serve me. Go grow some food. Feed your family and feed him. Well, I just feel, I just feel like called to, I'm, 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 God says, I'm feeling called to drop you. Look, it's a whole different thing. Everybody here tonight that's saved will find a place for you in the house of God to serve the Lord and offer up spiritual sacrifice and physical sacrifices. After you work and provide for your family. But everybody can serve God. Not in the Old Testament. Not under the law. It's a whole different thing, man. Whole different thing. Look at verse 24 of our chapter. God, he's not finished. Verse 24. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an Eve offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. So that's, that's what they get from God. Keep going. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up an Eve offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. I've heard pastors say, I don't have to tithe. The tithe is for me. Well, that's not what God taught about tithing. I've heard missionaries say, I don't, I don't tithe because the tithe comes to me. That's not what the, the tithe law says. You take ten, and, and this is, people say, well, you know, I, I gave to God, I didn't get anything back. You know what the Lord said? They bring you meat. And you take 10% of that meat and give it to God. You know how they give it to God? They burn it up on, a, on an altar. You know what they got in return for that? Nothing. They just showed God he meant that much to them. Now, come on, you, you, you understand the principle? God's not going to ask that those people to live on 90% and then have the have the priest live on a hundred percent. You're going to stand up and tell people they got to give 10% to God or they're doomed, and then you write yourself a pass because you're a man of God? Don't you practice what you preach, man? Better yet, set the example and go beyond. All right, keep going. Verse 27. And this is your heave offering. Uh, this your heath offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press. If you could grow your food, I'd, I'd count it like you grew this yourself. See what he's saying? I mean, I, I'm just be honest with you. This is kind of a, a tough situation to be in. When I tithe or give an offering to the Lord, it's yours. I didn't, I didn't produce that. I didn't drive a truck or, or uh, repair a roof. Or You gave, and part of that came to me, and I said, Lord, here, here's my offering. Well, not really. But you know what God said? If you'll give it up, I'll count it as though you actually earned it or actually grew it or actually harvested it. See that? All right, 28. Thus ye uh, also, and as you, ladies, listen, if God, if God told that man go out and work and earn a living, and you're staying home and raising the children, and he's, he's giving, your cheerful participation in that giving is just as if you had earned it and given it yourself. That's money you could have had. If you, if you, you could have done the Delilah thing and worn him out. I don't have any shoes, and you're giving that missionary. I don't have any shoes. Well, I mean, technically, you do have some shoes. But they don't match that. You know, they didn't match the skirt till you washed it. I mean, I, get, I understand all that. But when you cheerfully support the giving of your household, God said it counts just as though you, you gave it. You kids ought to get in on it. Say, Dad, before you put that money in there, can we just all pray over it and I can tell the Lord it's for me if, yeah. if, and, and yeah. I'm giving up some allowance I could have had? Allowance. Well, you, you said allowance to my dad. I'll allow you something. I'll allow you to eat. 
That was a day. 28. Thus ye also shall offer an eve offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive the children of Israel, and ye shall give of the, uh, thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts she shall offer every heave offering uh, of the Lord, of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part thereof, uh, out of it. How about that? Pretty clear, isn't it? The law of the tithe is very clear. I just don't know anybody that tithes. All right, Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14, because i, I got to go quick, because I know you want to know what the Bible says to you about uh, giving. Deuteronomy 14, verse 21. And 21's not part of our study tonight, but if we were this close to the verse, we've got to read it. Ye should not eat of anything that dieth of itself. You know, there are some things you just say, God, did you have to put that? I mean, who would do that? Look at that possum over there. It's about to have a sunstroke. We'll just wait a couple of minutes. We'll grab it and eat it. <laughs> Thou should give it unto the stranger that's in thy gates <laughs> that he may eat it. <laughs> Take it down to the border. <laughs> Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. <laughs> if they're healthy enough to cross the solar system, they can eat a dead possum. <laughs> All right, 20, 20. That's, you gotta admit, that's a weird verse, man. That's, <laughs> you find something dead laying on the ground, don't eat it. <laughs> but you can give it to somebody who's not, not an Israelite, let him eat it. <laughs> 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. Sure doesn't look like money, does it? Right. Thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he sh which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and the firstling, uh, firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Sounds to me like he said, if you don't ever learn to tithe, you don't ever learn to give, you'll never learn to fear the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what he said. If the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it. <laughs> they didn't have airplanes back then you could take your dogs and your goats on. <laughs> uh, sorry, we already preached on that, didn't we? Or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, for sheep, for wine, for strong drink, for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt, uh, and, uh, thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household, and the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Here's what he said. If that food's not going to keep until you get to where you're supposed to offer it, sell it, take the money, and when you get there, buy something for the Levite. That's what he said. 27. You don't just blow the money. You buy something for the Levite. Why? Where's his vacation? Morning and evening burnt offerings. Year round. All right, 28. Now, what? Now, here we go. Uh, let me say it again. No one tithes. And no one preaches tithing. No, no, you don't preach tithing. Neither do the people that say that. 28. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. Who preaches tithe once every three years? Do you know how many people would, would be sick that Sunday? <laughs> you know how many people would say, boss, whatever you do, you've got to make me work late. <laughs> One offering every three years? Come on. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, 
which are within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. All right, so I'm teaching tithing. Every third year, invite the preacher and a bunch of poor people to go with you on a vacation. That's tithing. That'd make you be careful about who your preacher was. <laughs> have you ever heard anybody teach tithing? You have now. Nehemiah 10.38 says, And the priest, the son of Aaron, should be with the Levites. When the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers and the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn, the new wine, the new wine, the new wine, not the fermented wine, and the oil unto the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary, and the priests that minister, and the porters, and the singers, and we will not forsake the house of our God. Okay? So, we'll add one more thought here. If they're attending but they're not tithing, God says, you've forsaken my house. Yeah. Going there doesn't count if you're not contributing to the upkeep. Amen. You've forsaken the house of the Lord. Come on, if your roof is caved in and your windows are broken and, and the plumbing's leaking all over the place, the fact that you're sitting there in the living room watching TV, you've forsaken your house. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to look at that again. Good, good. That's, that's the idea. Go home and look at it again. Amen. Amen. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. All right, one more thing from the Old Testament. Uh, in Genesis 14, 17... Genesis 14, 17, because after all, there is a man who tithed in the Old Testament, and that man is cited in the New Testament. And so it would be, it would be uh, unjust to not take a look here. Verse 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer. That guy was the big cheese. And the... <laughs> Sorry. And the kings that were with him at the valley of Shevi, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. People want to know, who is Melchizedek? He was the priest of the Most High God. That's who he was. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand, period. And he gave him tithes of all. Praise the Lord. Was he required to? Was he instructed to? Was he threatened with loss or cursing if he didn't? No, he just saw fit to do so. So, when this event is given in the New Testament as an example to us, the example is, well, why wouldn't you? You're not commanded, you're not threatened, you're not required, there's no law, just do it. Because you're thankful to God for what He's done for you. All right, finally, and we'll go to the New, to the New Testament, finally. You know when the children of Israel came into the to promised land, the book of Joshua, and God said, don't take anything, don't take anything out of Jericho. Or I, I've, I'll curse that sin, I'll curse you. Don't take anything out of Jericho. And Achan did. And God cursed him, took him out, took his family out. And then the children of Israel repented, they got right with God, and they went on. Do you know how many cities they conquered in the, in the book of Joshua and got to keep all the spoils? Nine. You know what Jericho was? It was the tithe. It was the first city God gave them in the land, and they were supposed to give God the best, the first, the top tenth, and when they didn't, it brought a curse upon the nation. 
They got that thing right, and then they took nine cities and the rest of Joshua and got to keep all the spoil thereof. You know something? I don't want to get ahead of myself. Most of us could live okay on 90%. Which of us doesn't blow 10% here or there on something we don't really need? Which of us couldn't, I mean, we didn't die this morning with the AC out. You couldn't cut off the AC one day a week and have some money to give to God and give to missions? We could, we could. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking at nobody, I'm thinking of nobody, just honestly. But in, in 60 years living and, and 50 plus years of, of giving to God, before you say I can't give because I'm poor, may, you might want to reverse that and say maybe I'm poor because I don't give. Maybe if I put God first in my life instead of me, things might start going a little better for me. And you say, well, if I was rich, I would give. You know how many rich people don't give God anything? Well, if I win the lottery, I, I've, I've, I've known two people won that thing. And both of them changed that tune they were singing when they won. If you won't give God $10 out of 100, you're not going to give him a million out of 10 million. I guarantee you, a man can't put a $10 bill in an offering plate is not writing God a check for six figures or seven figures. <laughs> That's not happening. All right, let's go to the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse number one. Before you get upset, there is more there is more in the New Testament epistles about giving than there is about witnessing. There's more in the New Testament epistles about giving than there is about praying. There's more in the New Testament epistles about giving than there is about baptism. So if you don't like to give and you don't like to hear about giving, you're, you're not a balanced Christian. 2 Corinthians 9, 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. He said, I don't even talk to you about giving. You know all about it. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we say not ye should be ashamed in this confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty as not as a matter of covetousness. Here's what he said. I, Paul the missionary, am coming to your church for a missions conference and I want the money waiting when I get there. Because I don't want you giving because I showed you pictures of hungry kids and you started crying and wrote a check. I want you giving to God because you love God and it's the right thing to do. And the church at Corinth did. Everybody criticizes Corinth. 1 Corinthians is a mess. 2 Corinthians, it's great. They got the thing going. Verse 6, but this I say. Anybody believe the Bible? Anybody here believe the Bible? All right. Forget, forget what the... the the, the crook preachers have said, look at the Bible. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Amen. Won't you believe that as much as you believe John 14, 6 or John 3, 16? It's there. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give. Got that? See verse 7? Does that look anything like the tithing law of Malachi or the tithing law of Leviticus? For every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. It's up to you. If you want to sow a measly 1%, get ready to reap a measly 1%. You want to sow 5, 10, 15, 20, 25%? It's up to you. It's not a law. 
not grudgingly or of necessity. If you hate giving, don't give. You have a bad attitude about it, don't give. God, God will bring in the money from somewhere else. Everybody gives to get a blessing, the Lord will get a blessing, and you'll miss out. You can just sit around grudging. Oh, they preach about his money. It's not true. It's not true, but it's how covetous people feel when you preach about it once in a while. So if you're visiting, look, every man according to his purpose is heart. Nobody asks you for any money. Nobody's going to ask you for any, ever. It's up to you. Well, nobody here. Well, nobody authorized to do so here. <laughs> Maybe somebody in the hall or in the parking lot or with an email, but some things out of our hands. Or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You say, well, God loves everybody. Yeah, that looks to me like that's a little extra special yes, sir. something there, don't you think? Yeah, Verse 8 to 14, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things. See what he said? Yeah. Whatever you give up, God will see. If you gave it to him from your heart because you love him, he said, I'll make sure, I'll make sure you don't miss it. How about that? All right, let's look at verse 12. Chapter 9, verse 12. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God which is in you. So what is, what is our giving in the New Testament? First of all, it is <laughs> service. People say, well, I went to a church service. What service did you render? Yes, sir. Sitting and listening is not service. Fellowshipping and talking in the hall is not service. Getting stuff off a giveaway table is not service. You know what service is in the Bible? It's giving. Let's have a church service. <laughs> 13, it's an experiment. I just don't know if I could afford to give anything. Well, try it. It's an experiment. Everybody I know that's tried it has said, it works okay, Amen. like everything else in the Bible, Amen. works okay. Verse 13, it is a proof that you're in subjection to the gospel. Oh, God, I believe the gospel. You might believe the part about Christ saving you from your sins. Do you believe the part about you giving your money so he can save other people from their sins? You profess subjection to the gospel of Christ, prove it by giving. That's what he said. Oh, well, the Bible's an interesting book, isn't it? Amen. You get reading those verses, you almost wish you had to tithe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a look at 1 Corinthians 16. 1 Corinthians 16. Remember that storehouse? There was, there was one place in all the nation of Israel where you could bring your offerings because there was only one place where God allowed acceptable sacrifice. Yes, but now the Lord has his church here and there and everywhere. And here's what he says in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1, now, now, not back then under the law, now, not in the millennial kingdom, now. Concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order, these are orders from God, 
as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye, upon the first day of the week. Why do we meet on the first day of the week? Well, there's things all of us are supposed to do on the first day of the week, so we may as well just do the rest of them Amen. on the first day of the week. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you. Amen. Who's supposed to give? Everybody. Amen. Everybody. The rich man, the poor man, the middle class man. Amen. Who's supposed to give? Everybody. Everybody. The Bible school student, the kid mowing yards, the retiree with a pension, every one of you, every one of you. My parents taught me to give. I've given all my life. I'm not bragging. I'm thanking God for it. I don't know how much money that added up to in, in uh, 54 years now of giving. I remember putting dimes and quarters in the, in the little uh, missionary box in the Sunday school class in the Southern Baptist Training Union and thinking as I put it in there, it was three games of pinball. <laughs> get three games for a quarter, man. You get a, you get a 16 ounce uh, Coke out of the machine for a dime. There went that dime, gone, <laughs> gone. Didn't turn into two dimes, it was gone. There went, there went that quarter, gone. Praise God. Glad I was taught to give. My life's been, my life's been good. Been good life. Haven't missed it. Haven't missed it. Don't want it back. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. So where's the store now? Where's the storehouse now? It's God's house. He doesn't have one house now. He's got one in this town, one in that town, one in the other town. So where's every saved person supposed to be on the first day of the week? In the church house. What's everybody supposed to do when they get there? Not sing a special, not teach Sunday school, not preach. They're supposed to give. Every one of them is supposed to give. Well, what if I don't? Well, you miss out. That's all. Nobody's going to threaten you. Nobody's going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to knock on your door. Well, nobody here. Nobody, nobody here is authorized. <laughs> As God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Okay. This is as far as we can go tonight. I'd like to go farther. This is as far as we can go tonight. Here's what I would say. If you say I can't give, here's what I would like to do. And I've done this with many, many people. I would like to sit down with you and find out why you can't give. And I would ask you to tell me everything you spend money on. And I'd ask you how come you can't give to God, but you can put rotten food in the mouth of a dog or a cat. I would ask you why you have a phone that does 400 things and you only know how to do three of them. I mean, there's, there's, I'm, I'm just telling you, if I'm first in my life, I have no problem coming up with money to get what I want. If God's first in my life, I'd have no money coming up with, no problem coming up with some money to give to God. Well, I'd like to give, but I, you give to Subway three times a week. Make your own sandwich. You can't be that lazy. You can't be that busy. You don't even have to make a peanut butter sandwich. Just stick a jar, a spoon in the jar. <laughs> Stuff a cracker in with one hand and some peanut butter in with the other and drive with your knee, man. Keep on going. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm saying if God's who we claim he is, if God means to us what we say he means to us, how come he's not worth one lousy dollar out of ten? And you know what that was? That was the tithe. Because all I'm talking about tonight is tithing. If the tithe went to the Levites, where'd they get all the animals for the sacrifices? That was the offerings. 
on top of the tithe. Where'd they get enough money for all the feast days? Some of them lasting seven days like a Bible conference or a revival or a camp. Where'd they get that money? That was on top of the tithe. We're just talking about tithing. If everybody tithed, one man in 13 could be in a full-time ministry. Of course, you'd have to give your offerings so they'd have a place to minister and some stuff to minister with and all that. I'd just ask him, if you're not giving it to God, what are you giving it to? You start naming stuff. I, I guarantee, and I preached this 20 years ago, it was Blockbuster. Now it's block busted. <laughs> I, don't, you know, I mean, whatever you say is going to be outdated in a, in a year from now. But honestly, honest, if you'd pay 30, 40, 50 bucks for a stupid video game, you've got to be able to give God something. You can go out to eat and pay, pay $8 for a sandwich and a Coke and, some, and, and point five ounces of chips in a bag. How do they stop the machine? That's some precision machine, man. 1.5 ounces of potato chips in a bag. <laughs> Be better off eating a bag than the <laughs> chips, probably. Anyway, they're, they're, not a person, they're not a person that's saved that couldn't give. Right. If everybody gave, what could be done? Yeah. What could be done? I, I've asked pastors for decades, and, and on average, on average, Probably about 60% of our people in our churches have income, paychecks. And out of those, on average, in the average church, about 40% of the people give all the money. 100% of the people get all the blessings, all the benefits, reap all the rewards, enjoy all the privileges, 40% carry, carry the weight. That, that ought not so to be. Amen. God's not going to curse you. He's not going to break your arm. Can you imagine going to the hospital and here's some, uh, uh, what, uh, who, who broke his arm here? Uh, Christian broke his arm. He's down there in the, in the hospital and go there and, and say to his parents, guess you hadn't been given enough. <laughs> God's going to get out of you one way or another. God didn't get it. The hospital got it. <laughs> that didn't go to God. Going to God, we'd, we'd beat you up and take it from you in the parking lot. <laughs> that would be God getting it out of you one way or the other. <laughs> so, you don't have to give. But if you, if you thought about who God is and what he's done for you, you you'd say to yourself, why, why am I not? Why am I not giving something to God and something to help the Lord? Amen. All right, so... I stand by my statement, no one tithes. No one tithes. New Testament Christians don't have to, uh, but I'd be afraid to do any less. If a, if a spiritually dead Jew under the law gave 10% and then some, I'd sure want to at least match him as a saved, born-again Christian in the New Testament. Praise the Lord.